I'm Katie. I'm Amanda. And I'm Gabriella. And we're going to be um, discussing Chapter 5 of um, the Social Disability book, and that explores coping with and adjusting to disability. So first we kind of wanted to give um, an overview of this chapter, um, and we laid it out in kind of a continuum of coping. And Chapter 5 asks the question, why do some individuals seem to respond to negative events better than others do? And how do some um, persons with disabilities find meaning and positive byproducts in their conditions? So this is kind of the continuum of ongoing fluctuating reactions between the two poles. Um, and there are different um, mental frameworks that people adopt regarding disability. So either their own or others um, that have a decided impact on their psycho, psycho, psychosocial outlook adjustment and well-being. So we're going to map out the two possibilities of these frameworks which fall under coping framework and succumbing framework, um, which respectively fall into finding positive meaning in disability and effective forecasting. Um, and then we're going to connect it all to an article that talks about changing implicit and explicit attitudes. So this is kind of our hypothetical um, person with a disability. So we're going to represent non-disabled persons in orange and we're going to represent persons with disabilities in green. So this is talking about the cope, the differences between the coping and succumbing frameworks. So the coping framework um, focuses more on the positive side of disabilities. Um, it focuses on the retained values and potential assets of disabilities. It is the more active and independent mindset. Um, it works to alter or eliminate physical and social barriers. Um, persons with disabilities are able to seek helpful medical interventions and this coping framework also promotes positive meaning within disabilities. Whereas the succumbing framework is kind of the more negative mindset of having a disability and it, um, it's a more passive and dependent framework or mindset and it, there's no consideration of eventually adjusting to disability. So first we're going to look at the coping framework, which is about finding positive meaning in disability. So here we have some potential dialogues here. So um, knowing that disability is not the person's fault, it's not an inherently bad thing. Um, focusing on a positive social comparison. So in our hypothetical scenario, a person who might be uh, purple could have a more detrimental disability. So saying like, I might be green, but what about the person who's purple? Um, using reframing tactics, like I can still do everything that I did before, just in a different way. Um, having a new beginning mindset. So by being green, I've now found a job where I can excel in a different way. Uh, Self-appreciation, that this makes me unique, it makes me special. Um, and utilizing the social support network that could be presented. Oh. Um, yes. Um, so we have our green lady here, and she says, being green is not a reflection of my personal character. There are lots of opportunities ahead of me, and I have a great support system to help me get there. And behind our green lady, there's an orange lady and another green lady who are her support network and they're saying we are here to support you and because of this coping mindset and positive framework our newly green lady is able to utilize her support system and have a good outlook for her life. Next we're going to look at the pathway for the succumbing framework which uh, often incorporates effective forecasting, which is when someone will predict what might happen to them several years in the future and they predict their emotional response to it. So this can often lead to increased stress, they might overestimate the magnitude of how they're feeling, and this leads to a passive acceptance of their situation and overall just decreases their outlook on life. So on the succumbing pathway, we have our green lady again, but this time she's saying, being green has changed my life for the worse. I can't imagine this getting any better. 
so there's little point to me trying. I am alone in this. But still in the background, we see the same orange lady and green lady, her support system saying, we're here to support you. But unfortunately, uh, because our green lady has decided that there's little point in trying and feels like there's no way for her life to go back to some semblance of the way it was or her emotional state, she's either ignoring or refusing to accept the help she's given. Um, so Elder Wright and Yuli Sinin looked at a um, research literature into this phenomenon of coping framework and succumbing framework and how their perceptions from social perceivers um, change. So they looked at an in internet population um, in the US that um, analyzed um, coping framework and the succumbing framework. And what happened was um, those who, they uh, filmed a fundraiser um, and had participants watch this fundraiser. And um, there was a voiceover of either a person with disability succumbing to their condition or effectively coping with it. And uh, they measured attitudes of the social perceivers following this film fundraising appeal. And what happened was those who watched the succumbing framework um, developed a less favorable appeal to people with disability, whereas those who watched the uh, coping framework actually predicted more positive social exchanges. Uh, they attributed these attitudes towards uh, the feeling of heroism towards people with disability, whereas those in the succumbing condition um, felt more pity towards people with disability. Um, the interesting part of the study was that when they were asked to donate money uh, following this film, what happened was both conditions were willing to donate the exact same amount of money. So this is a really good example of how our implicit attitudes don't always align with our explicit attitudes. So we uh, looked further into this pattern of implicit and explicit attitudes, and we found some recent literature um, on longitudinal studies from 2007 to 2016, um, and I can correct myself here that this is the study with, um, that looked at an in their population of the US um, and took data from that to investigate this relationship a little bit further. So what they did is they basically looked at six categories. So we have sexuality, race, skin tone, age, disability, and body weight. And they looked at both implicit and explicit attitudes from all six of these categories. So our implicit attitudes um, are those evaluations that usually occur without um, our knowledge and pretty unconsciously. Um, they measured this through the IAT, so implicit association attitude test, and our explicit attitudes which are attitudes that um, are deliberately thought about and can actually pretty readily be reported, those are measured through um, explicit preferences. So a seven-point uh, Likert scale that looked at from negative three to three, where three is um, favor for our uh, bias towards our favorable group, where negative three is bias towards our unfavorable group. And what they found was these top four categories, so sexuality, race, skin tone and age, they actually found that in both implicit and explicit attitudes, um, our biases tended, towards, tended to move towards neutrality over time. So from 2007 to 2016, um, we have improved our biases towards uh, people in these categories. The interesting part comes with disability and body weight. So um, in disability, there was no change in implicit attitudes over time. So we have um, not improved as a social group our awareness or prejudice against uh, people in this category over time, whereas our explicit attitudes um, did move towards neutrality. Then body weight and implicit attitudes, they actually moved away from neutrality. So we have gotten almost worse in our perceptions of people affected by body weight issues um, from a social perspective. Now, the really, um, the commonalities observed with uh, sexuality, race, skin tone, and age is really important because it tells us that our implicit attitudes can change. And it counters the assumption that implicit attitudes are um, 
less conscious and thus less controllable because we see here that we can control them over time. Um, with disability and body weight, it's assumed and discussed that the reason we saw um, worse biases or unchanged biases over time was due to the fact that these categories um, are perceived to be controllable by the person. So those affected by disability or body weight um, are perceived to have more control over their situation and thus when Ooh, it just moved. Um, that's when it doesn't, um, when we encounter someone with this, uh, with a problem in this category, uh, we tend to put more of the blame on them um, in comparison to just something that's biological, like race or age. So we want to say thank you, and we hope that this presentation has provided you with some knowledge on um, how our implicit and explicit attitudes can change over time and interact and hopefully how we as social perceivers can work with our own implicit attitudes um, to give people with disability hope for a coping framework. Thank you.